Splendid morning out here. It's just so pretty. The snow out here is just pristine other than all these deer tracks everywhere and the beds that they've scraped out. It is just pristine. It's so pretty out here. For those of you who are new to this channel, I don't only make videos where I get out and uh, have you follow along with me on my adventures as I look for wildlife to photograph. Periodically I also make videos where I share some tips or techniques that you can use to improve your own wildlife photography. So in this week's video I wanted to share some of those techniques that I use to make more engaging images to look at. Uh, when I first started out in wildlife photography, my main goal was to just photograph as many species as possible and most of those images ended up being portraits of the animals that I would photograph. But as time went on, I started getting more into action photography uh, with the wildlife, uh, trying to capture that action as they went about uh, doing whatever they were doing. And I'm always on the lookout for opportunities to take pictures that help to tell a story. So in this week's video, those are the techniques that I wanted to review with you. Some of the things that I do to help tell a story in the pictures that I take. Let's jump right into it. Probably the most simple way of telling a story through your photography is by taking a sequence of images. Each of these images can tell a story in themselves, and when you tie them all together, it helps the viewer to see the bigger picture. But usually as photographers, we don't have the option of showing multiple images at once. So the challenge becomes, how do you tell a story through your pictures when you can only show the viewer a single image? These are the things that I wanted to talk about today. Usually what I found, it comes down to showing relationships. Let me explain. If you couldn't tell, we're in the dead of winter here, and winter can be a wonderful time of year to start your photography storytelling journey. Anytime you can portray a relationship between your subject and the environment, you can better tell a story. Let me show you some examples. The image of this coyote portrays the struggle to survive in a harsh landscape. Similarly, it's easy to see the same struggle as this fox tries to weather this winter storm. These images tell a story of the daily struggle that these animals face in the wild. As I mentioned, winter can be a wonderful time of year to tell stories through your photos. Another relationship that helps to tell a story is the relationship between predator and prey. It can be very difficult as a wildlife photographer to create an image with both predator and prey in it, but if you can accomplish this, you can help tell a story of these interactions that happen every day in the wild. Let me show you some more examples. All of these images that I'm about to show you have coyotes in them, but rather than just focusing on the coyote, I chose to zoom out and show the bigger image and show why the coyotes were there in the first place. They were all looking for food. In the first image, the coyote approaches some geese, hoping for some lunch. You can see that the geese are on high alert as the coyote stalks towards them. Next, we have a coyote and a mountain goat. Again, the coyote is looking at the goat, hoping for a meal, and the blurry goat is in the foreground, looking right back. And finally, we have a hungry coyote surveying a valley dotted with bison below. In all three of these images, a relationship between multiple species is shown, a story is told, and the imagination can go right to work as to what happens next. Showing emotion in your pictures is another fantastic way of helping to tell a story. And once again, this comes down to relationships. Relationships between the wildlife that you're photographing. 
If I want to show emotion in a picture, one of my favorite animals to photograph are foxes, especially young foxes. These young foxes are full of emotion when mom or dad comes home. The excitement shows through in your images and helps tell a story. If you're a parent, you may be familiar with this story when you come home from work at the end of a long day and your kids are there to greet you. This brings me right into my next tip. Try to create relatable images. If you can show a situation or scenario that the viewer can personally relate to, they'll better understand the story that you're trying to tell. This is one of my favorite examples of a relatable image. Two young bears playing wildly in the foreground and an exhausted mother just trying to get a moment of peace in the background. Again, if the viewer can personally relate to what an animal may be feeling in an image when they look at it, you've taken a big step to telling a familiar story to that viewer. These are techniques that I use in my own photography and things that I'm constantly looking for when photographing wildlife. Do you do the same things or do you tell stories in other ways? I would love to hear from you. Let us know in the comments below. I love learning from you guys and I've mentioned this before, but I know the other viewers who read through those comments love learning learning from you as well. So let us know what you do in your own photography. It's so easy to get stuck in the habit of just zooming in and taking those close-up images or just looking for a cool action shot. But to me, if you can take an image that tells a story, it's just as or even more engaging than some of those cool action shots or portraits that you can get. Again, just my opinion. So I hope this video has been helpful for you in your own photography. I'm going to get going now, see what wildlife I can find out here. Thank you so much for following along. I hope this video has been useful for you, and I hope that it helps in your own photography. I'm super excited for next week's video. I've been spending a lot of time looking for a little animal to show you in next week's video. If you want a hint as to what it is, go back to last week's video and give it a watch. That'll give you a big hint as to what I've been spending so much time with, uh, so much time looking for, I should say, the last couple weeks. So I'm super excited for next week's video. Stay tuned. If you did enjoy this week's video, please share it around. That helps me so much. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time.